Thank you for coming. Um, and I'm so happy that we have so many people with their instruments here today. This is fantastic. Because the idea is it's not a theory class. It's a class where we can start to have a different experience of playing on stage. So the purpose of today is to hopefully give some of you with your instruments uh, a very different experience of performing on stage. If you get nervous, if you feel anxiety when you're performing in front of people. So I'm going to jump in the deep end and I'd like to get uh, one person up at a time up here and we'll just spend five or ten minutes each person playing and talking and trying some different ideas. Um, but first, before we start, I'm going to get, uh, take you on a little exercise that you can all do because you're all musicians and you all go on stage and I'm going to be getting the, uh, the musicians who come and play today to be doing this anyway. So I want to show you a couple of simple well-being exercises that you can do before you go on stage, even when you're on stage. So the first one is just having both your feet flat on the ground. And having our feet flat on the ground sends, very, it sends a lot of safety messages to the brain and the nervous system. When we have feet off the ground, it's not as balanced, it's not as grounded. So feet flat on the ground is a really good start to being able to regulate yourself better, to have more safe messages just in the body and in the mind. And I want you to put your attention on your feet. It's a little like a meditation exercise. You have your attention on your feet. And I want you to imagine, like on a tree, they have the big roots going down into the ground, yes? I want you to imagine big roots out the bottom of your feet going down into the earth. We'll just spend one minute doing this. So you have your attention on your feet. You imagine these big roots going down, down, down into the earth. And I want you to just feel how that feels. We'll just do that for one minute. And even if you're sitting cross-legged, you can still do it because you can imagine the roots going down from your feet. So it's a feeling thing. I want you to feel how that feels. Great. And exercise number two, I want you to put your attention on your breath. And I want you to breathe a little more deeply than normal, just at your own pace. If I'm saying breathe in and you're breathing out, no problem. So we just have our attention on our breath and just feel the air flowing in and flowing out and flowing in. and flowing out, just very steady like that. We'll do that for one minute. Just feel how that feels to be doing that slow. We call that conscious connected breathing. Just breathing in and out, very slow, steady, deeper breaths. Okay, good. Thank you. Simple? Yeah. 
So none of these exercises, and even when we're on stage, we don't need to be trying to do anything. We don't need to be trying to focus or trying to breathe. It's just very easy, and it will all happen as a side effect of what we do today. Okay, so who would like to play first? Or who is going to play first, but probably doesn't like to? <clears throat> because the, the idea of today, let me say something. Yes? Most people feel nervous on stage. It brings things up for them. It's normal. It's normal. So there's no shame, no embarrassment. We're going to be doing some positive work today to help you have a different experience. Okay, so I need one person at a time, and I'll get through everybody, just five or ten minutes each. Yeah? Wonderful. Thank you. Great. What's, what's your name? I can't read from here. My eyes are too long. Manuel, thank you. Manuel, would you like to just start playing something? We won't do like an audition where we do a whole concerto. It'll just be for a minute, and then we'll stop and talk about it. Yeah? How does that feel, Manuel? It feels normal. I didn't feel tense like uh, an audition or a mm -hmm. concert. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it wasn't as comfortable as practicing as practicing mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. all. Okay, great. So what I want you to do is to start again, and I want you to focus on playing with the sound that you love. You've got a beautiful viol, a beautiful sound, just focusing on playing with the sound that you love, not what you think we love or how we think it should be, but I want to hear your sound, how you love it to be for this opening of this beautiful music. happy with that? Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, because this is the thing. <clears throat> we want to be, the whole purpose of playing music is for people to enjoy our music, isn't it? Is to enjoy it. And, but if we forget to enjoy it, I think we've got a problem. So how is anyone else going to enjoy it if we're not enjoying it? If I talk to you and I hate being here, that would be awful. But I actually love being here, so it's good. <laughs> Um, so when we're playing, I like to explore sounds and try maybe a few different ways of playing it just for the tone so that if I'm, I don't know this piece, but if I'm playing, I might have something. And maybe I can play it like that. Maybe I like a different... maybe some other parts of the music. So there's all different sounds we use. When we're making music, we're telling stories and we're creating atmosphere. So I want you to keep playing. You can pick up where you've got to, if you like, and play some more of this work. And, but I want you to really focus on the beautiful atmosphere that you can create with the sound, because tone is everything. The tone is what tells the story. The tone is what makes people feel safe and relaxed listening to it and takes them on the journey. It doesn't matter how good you play the notes. If the tone isn't really meaning something for you, it's a waste of time, I think. So, the, and you have very nice tone. But I want to make sure that you're really focused on, oh, this part here, listen. There's this part with the crescendo and this beautiful soft part where I play a little lighter. So. You're, it's like you're sharing with us all the things that you love about the music 
at every every moment. Yeah. How does that feel? How do you feel playing now? I feel more free. Uh, great, <laughs> great. Okay, great. Thank you. So what we're actually doing, we're learning to listen to the instrument when we're playing. That's really what we're doing here. We're just listening more to what's coming out of the viola or the cello or the violin or the bass. We're just listening more. Because there's so much, we have to learn so many notes and there's these difficult parts with double stops and we have to concentrate to try and get them in tune and in time. But, <clears throat> but we want to be listening to the, to the drama of the music because if we're not listening, how's it going to be for the audience? If we're not listening and, and just waiting, you know, you may have some notes. <laughs> Maybe wait, wait a little. So what we're doing, we're listening to it. Rather than just doing the notes, we're always listening and we're shaping the sound all the time, a little longer on this note, a little shorter on that note. Because when we're listening, we start to hear when the, when the music is working or not, you see. OK, I might have time to get you back up again. I'm going to go through uh, everybody pretty quickly, but it's a sequence. Normally, if I had one hour with one person, we would go through all these seven sequences with one person, but we're going to do a different sequence with each person. But you can imagine, you can, so the next person, if it's you, do you want to come? Yeah. Um, take on board what I shared with Manuel about, the, about playing with the special feeling and the sound that you love. Yeah? And then I'll take you through some more steps beyond that. Okay. Thanks, Manuel. Very nice. So we just start playing and I'll get you a little bit of practice to practice what we were doing with Manuel. Mm -hmm. Listening to the sound and shaping it just how you really love the tone of that viola. Just playing with, keep going, playing with the sound that you love, just how you really love it. Yeah? Not how we love it, how you love it. Go on. Continue on. Okay, very nice. How's that feel? Um, I feel a bit better, but I'm still. I'm still a bit nervous. Yeah, that, that's natural, of course, of course. So, this is one of the things we can do to help. There's there's two approaches to healing stage fright. There's the short term, which we're doing today, and there's the long term, which I'll go into in the last part today. So the short term is these ways we can focus on the sound and the magic of what we're playing and bringing it to the audiences, that can create some changes in the short term. In the long term, we need to do more in-depth work on ourselves. You can't expect to be a good concert artist if you don't practice your instrument. And you can't expect to change these things if you don't work on yourself just like you work on your instrument. It makes sense, I think, yes? Sure. So it's not a one second fix here. It's something that we practice and the more and more we get used to listening. And So I want you to go on further with this music and really listening to the sound that you're playing so that you're, you're listening and enjoying the music. Do you enjoy the music when you play? Yeah. So really focusing on that, just, oh, I love this part here. 
oh, there's this fast part. It's very exciting. You know? Keep going, listening all the way, listening, and letting yourself enjoy that sound. Keep listening, listening as you play. Just let yourself enjoy the sounds, even if it's a wrong note, still enjoy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good, good. How do you feel? <laughs> a little nervous, yeah? Yeah. Okay. How is that really listening to the sound, though, and really 
enjoying, it helps. Yeah, that's great. That's, so this is a step in the right direction. Again, it's not a light switch where we just switch it over. It's practice. This is great. So, and feeling how all those intervals make you feel. But this is the next step I want you all to take into account. And you're all musicians here, so it's everybody, not just these people. I want you to feel it in your whole body. I want you to feel how each note <coughs> makes your body feel when you're playing. So this is a very uh, focused on when you're playing, how your body feels when you play the minor or the major or the, the fast part or the slow part, yeah? Continue on. Very nice. Can I go from the beginning? Sure, sure. Feeling how that makes you feel, all those intervals in your body. Good. Thank you. Good. And I will say this. If you play a wrong note, make it really sweet and make it really <laughs> beautiful because it will be much better than a horrible sounding wrong note, yeah? So if we make a beautiful tone, it's much, it's much less intrusive. We can still enjoy the sound. Oh, maybe tomorrow I'll practice that shift or something. But that's life. We know that as a musician, those things can be challenging. So this is where we start to treat ourselves kindly. We start to be kind to ourselves when we're learning and performing. And we don't get the whip every time we make a mistake. I have a friend. Uh, he was playing the Paganini Caprices when he was five years old. And his father was the professor of a conservatory. And uh, he had a stick. And every time he made a mistake, he would hit him. And so he learned great playing, a fantastic player, very nice person, very musical. But he gained his perfection that way. And it's one way. I'm not saying it's the wrong way, but there are other ways. And I think kindness gets much better results in the long term. And I just want to say kindness is not about escaping consequences or avoiding things that you really need to look at. That is not kindness. Real kindness is actually looking at the things we need to look at, but in a way which is finding answers and the best way we can do it and the kindest way we can do it to encourage ourselves. So when we have those critical voices, we need to critique our playing. Otherwise, we never improve, yeah? So we have to critique ourselves. But we want to, this is what my wife calls, the. we switch from the inner critic to the inner coach. We switch over. We get the other person. The critic, we say, yeah, OK, we heard enough of that. Now we need the coach to say, hey, let's do that again and more vibrato or something so that we're always building on making it a beautiful experience, yeah? So even if you practice scales, I would, always be practicing with a beautiful tone and feeling how it makes me feel. But this feeling how your body feels and how each note makes your body feel, it will relax things in the long term a lot. Because when we have our attention on our body, our body is what gets nervous. It starts to feel safe. It's like otherwise, it's like nobody's at home and the children don't feel safe. We've got to look after the body when we're here. So when we're playing, to have feeling with the body how that all feels, and then we can enjoy that. We can enjoy how that feels with every note. Yeah? Just a little bit more. Practicing, playing in this way, yeah? Feeling how it feels on every note. All through your body. And if you keep your feet flat on the ground, that will help, for sure. It will help. And any, yeah, anything you're not happy with, make it sound beautiful if you can. And if you miss the opportunity, be kind. Make a note. Oh, I'll practice that. OK, thank you. Thank you, Francesca.
Okay, so just again to reorientate that normally we would go through all of these steps with the one person. So each person would come to the masterclass, we would have a one day masterclass, we'd have about an hour each, just like in a normal repertoire masterclass, and we would go through all these steps for each person. Today we don't have a lot of time, so we'll be doing a different step with each person. Yeah. Now, hello, what's your name? Marilina. Marilina, nice to meet you. Thank you. So we've been talking about listening and feeling how the music makes us feel and enjoying that, letting ourselves enjoy that and feeling how it feels in the whole body, yeah? So just one step at a time. We don't try and do all those things, but if you can pay attention to at least one of them at a time, maybe just start with feeling how it feels and then maybe really listening, getting the sound how you want it, yeah? How you love it. How you, you know, again, when we're playing, I think it's what we, our real orientation as musicians is we can't wait to share all these beautiful parts of the music with our audience. Again, because we play music for our audiences. And they've come, if you go to a, you've got your colleagues here, it's a tough, tough performance. But if you play a concert in a concert hall, the audience mostly are not musicians. And they've come, they've had a horrible week at work or the family's been stressful. And if they could go to that place that you're gonna take them, they wouldn't pay the 50 euros to go to the concert, they'd stay home and they'd feel good. But they need us, they need the music to go to that place and feel something which got empty, starting to fill up, fill up, fill up. And that's our job. So you see how important it is that we have fun and that we approach it in a kind way and in an enjoying way and, and in a sharing way. And that's where we're gonna go in just a minute. But we just start off just feeling the music and enjoying your sound, yeah? Good, feeling how it feels, all those notes. And just enjoying that sound, enjoying that sound, every note. Okay, okay. Good, thank you. How, how do you feel? A bit nervous. Yeah. But how is it when you're focusing on the sound and how that feels for you? I think the, when I'm trying to focus more on the sound, the fingers seem to know better where to... Great, where to great, place. <laughs> great, good. Yeah, because you're, you're, in the, you've, you're participating in the drama of the music. You're, you're in the, the, the uh, dramatic parts and the sweet parts, you're participating. And again, if we're not participating like that, how is the audience going to be able to participate like that? Yeah? So good, very nice. Um, the next thing I want to do is when you're playing, we did that exercise with the tree roots, right, just to, what it does, it just calms the body down, calming down. I'd like you to do that when you're playing. It's maybe a little distracting at first, that's okay. We, we work with that. So not forcing it, but just whenever you can, have your attention feeling what it feels like, feeling what it's like to have those big roots going down into the ground. Yeah? Go on if you like or start again, whatever's comfortable. Feeling that connection down through your feet. Okay, how's that? Mm -hmm. 
how how was that for you? I was more much more connected now. I was like the first time I was uh, thinking about the audience and looking about, uh, at them, but now I yeah. Know. Okay, and we're going to come to that next because we're playing for an audience. And you know, when I, when I'm an old man now, but when I went through university, we were told things like, imagine the audience is not there, or imagine they have no clothes on. Why would you do that? So, you know, that, uh, genuinely they were attempts to help us, but to me that's like having to cut off the fingers because we want to actually be connected with all of you when we're playing. And so we'll spend just a minute with this. I want you to keep playing or start again however is comfortable. And I want you to play and I want you to let the audience in. So you're sharing it with the audience, yeah? Maybe I'll just turn around a bit more. You can, you can. So when you're playing, you're playing for every person here all the time. And you're feeling how that feels to share these beautiful music with all these people here. So while you're playing, keep going. You can feel your audience here. Even with your eyes closed, you can feel that. Okay, good. Thank you. Good, good. So it's a feeling thing, all of this. We're playing and we can shut the audience out or we can let them in and we can reach out and connect with them while we're playing. We don't have to look at them. It could be quite distracting, you know, if we're looking at everybody. But just to have that feeling in your heart that you're letting yourself open up and connect and letting everybody in, it's very good you do that very well. So keep working with those steps, yeah? Thank you. OK. Who's next? Hello. Hello. What's your name? Marlene. Marlene. Hello, Marlene. Nice to meet you. So we're moving on. So we're talking about playing for the audience now. So we're really letting the audience in and we're letting ourselves extend and we're sharing all these things because we imagine they don't know how to do it. They've just finished work. And even if they're musicians, you can still share your special way of playing that means something for you, you see. And then that still gives them a very special experience. And I'm going to talk about, uh, we're running out of time, I want to spend a little bit today also talking about relationships between each other as students and as colleagues, because I think we could make a lot of improvements still in how even secretly we think about each other when we're listening and when we're performing. It's a very, very powerful area of uh, developing a much more healthy relationship between audiences and, and musicians and between musicians. I'll go more into that. So, please. So listening to your sound and just sharing what you love. Just let yourself enjoy all the sound. Okay, good. How's that feel? A bit nervous still. Yeah, okay. But as I said, it's not something that just I can fix for you, but you can take these things away, all these, and I'll can write down all the seven steps at the end for you. But the, each of these little steps, when you're practicing, when you're performing, playing in orchestra, going to a, viol to a viola <coughs> lesson, you can at least practice one of these things at a time. Yeah, And slowly you'll notice that it gets a little easier and you feel happier about sharing your music. Because we all started music because we love it. We love music. I remember before I learned to play violin, my elder siblings played cello and viola and violin and piano. 
And I thought this was going to be great. Unfortunately, I wasn't taught very well compared to modern day, what, like what um, Gies has done for education and many others, making it so much more child friendly and much more um, sympathetic for where the children are experiencing. But so we, we're, we're playing music because we were drawn to it. We love listening to music. And so if you can practice listening so much when you're playing, it's just like when you were listening to anybody. Yeah? Let's go a little more. So really listening and just enjoying all those sounds. Just let your audience in a little bit. There's still a little bit of a, you know at the bank they have that glass window that it, if somebody comes in with a gun, the window goes up. It's not that bad, but there's a little bit of a window. You can feel that? Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can just take that window down a little bit, okay? And a little bit each time, each day, the end of the year, there's no window, yeah? Good. Just let that window come down. Okay, very nice. How's that feel? Still nervous, but a little bit better, yeah. So all of these things, if we can get something that helps a little bit and keeps helping a little bit by the end of the month and the year, it, it's a lot, just like practice, so, yeah. But if you go from here and you don't pay attention to any of this and you say, well, Rupert's masterclass didn't do much, of course it didn't because you don't practice it. So you have to practice these things, just like if you learn a better way to do bowing or or interpretation, you have to practice that. So good, very nice, thank you. We still have a little bit of time. Um, yes, would you like to come? My favorite, my favorite students are the ones who don't want to play because we can do so much, yeah? Yeah. And I actually think a lot of people don't want to play because they have so much to offer and they're scared maybe it won't all come out right. So I think rather than anything negative, I think it's actually a positive sign if people are a bit nervous and maybe don't want to get up because they don't want to have a bad experience. So we're learning today how to have good experiences more and more and more every time. Yeah. So I'd like you just to start keeping in mind what we've been talking about today, yeah? So maybe just focus on the sound and sharing all that beautiful sound with these people. Because everyone here loves music. You've got, a, you've got the best audience, because they all love music. Feeling how those notes make you feel, yeah? And sharing. And feel how it feels in your whole body, yeah? Okay, good. Good, very nice. So how was that? Not good. Hmm? Not good. Not good. Okay. So it just takes time to get good. Yeah? So but you can do this. You can be focusing on just being open to the audience. And with time, that becomes a safe place. It becomes a safe place because we, we want to share what we love with people. 
Yeah. Now, so, you know, we did the breathing at the beginning like this. So I'd like you to, while you're playing, continue on if you want or start again, however. I want you to just be doing, having attention on your breath. So it's a little bit distracting at first, but keep breathing because the breathing sends safety signals to the whole person. You know, um, back in primitive times where there were predators and animals that they would eat, if an animal saw a tiger coming, the first thing it would do would s hardly breathe. It would just very shallow breathing because then it doesn't move much and it can't be seen so easily. Okay, so one of the first things that happens when we get nervous is we go less breathing. And so what we can do if we can deepen the breathing, it starts to send all the opposite messages right through our whole self, emotionally, mentally, physically, just with that slightly deeper breathing. Let's have a go. So we're playing, but we're breathing as we play. Keeping the breathing nice and deep. Okay, thank you. How's that? Better? Yeah. So it helps to calm everything down. And you can, you can do this before you go on stage, of course. It's the best thing is to have, just like you would maybe warm up if you came from from a bus to play the concert, you would play a few things. This is another part of your warm up, is to get right with yourself. Have some breathing, maybe feeling the, the grounding with the roots and reminding yourself about the audience, that you're there. These are your friends, actually, not your enemies. And it's so important that we start to shift this and only we can do that. Only we can change that. So. Um, one other thing that I'd like to work with you on is um, just playing again. And I want you to feel, because there's some of those nice shifts, da, 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 da. I want you to feel how they make you feel and really take time and share that with us, yeah? Let's do that again. So when you go when you go up for da 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 de, da, how does that feel? Uncomfortable. Yeah, a dangerous shift. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it goes wrong, but I want you to dial back and just feel what the feeling of the music is there. I don't care if you play out of tune. I just want to hear you playing that and feeling the music of that shift up and down because it's such a. You could have just gone. What are the notes? Uh, B, B, yeah, okay. So you could have just played that in first position, but why the shift? Because it's expressive. It's a, it makes a different music. So we have to make, we, uh, we have to enjoy that difference from just playing in first position, yeah? Feel how, and now the double stops. How does that feel? It's different because you've got the, the two notes. It's a very different sort of uh, message in the music. So I want you again, when you come to the double stops, really feel that. How does that make me feel? Wow. And this shift also, just very relaxed, enjoying that, sharing that beautiful shift with everyone. You see, because we've, we've trained ourselves with the critic. And when we don't, we need a critic for fixing things up. But when we go on stage, it's too late, right? It's like if you, if you come to a hospital and you have some surgery to fix something, 
You're not walking down the street with the doctor running after you trying to do more surgery. It's over, that part's over. You're putting some special cream on it and helping it to get better. And so when we come to perform, it's too late to be critical. We, the only thing we can do that will make it a really good performance is to enjoy it. And I can guarantee, except for maybe some of the worst audiences, if you play a bit out of tune but you're playing with a lot of feeling, no one's going to mind. Because as a musician, you would go home and practice that more and over the months it would be fixed. But um, to play with uh, so much feeling, that's what will um, make people forgive you. <laughs> They'll forgive you more because the feeling was so special. Let's do that part again with the big shifts. And see how that makes you feel there. Now this part, and then the next one. Okay, so you go up there, it's a scary note. Make a good tone up there. Let's do that again. Even if it's the wrong note. Now, no, big sound, a beautiful tone. Yeah, good. So it's, so it's important that we start to train ourselves when we see a difficult part, we actually, well, we don't want to make it loud if it's piano, but we make it more present. So the more difficult, the more present we need to make it because otherwise it was, even if we get the notes right, because we backed away, it's not going to really have the story and the music anymore. So much better to have the story, fix the notes when you get home but it's important. Thank you very much. Good. Okay, and this may seem like an oversimplification perhaps, but I can guarantee if you really take this seriously, just like every other aspect of your playing, that you will find that with time, that window starts to come down, the bank window starts to come down and you start to, you, you start to forget to get nervous. You know, I, I had um, terrible stage fright all my life until I, till, what, 2002. Is that a long time ago, 22 years ago. And that year I did a tour and I came home and I said to my wife, I forgot to get nervous. And so I, I spent the next six months exploring what was different. And this is what was different. I was really listening, I was really in, enjoying the sound of my violin and I realised that the job of a musician is to share what they love with the audience. Even if it's your colleagues, even if it's your teacher, you're still sharing what you love. And if you forget that, it's going music a little plastic, all right? It's not a criticism, but it does, it makes it more plastic because we're not, we're not um, sharing from our hearts what, what's so special about the music. So um, I want to talk a little bit. Oh, any questions? We have about two minutes. So is there st steps that you do? Yeah. And can you yeah, I'll go through that. Yeah, sure. Just you have a question? Yes. Um, so what also, I think, in case, because some people say, like, what you say, they just forget to be nervous. But sometimes I think, um, I, I, I think about that, oh, I'm not going to get nervous, I know these things to do, but then you get nervous anyway. Yes. And yeah. is there, I, get, I guess like, is there a way that we can accept to get nervous? Yes, and then exactly. And then just deal, because we know ourselves? Yeah, yeah, the worst thing is to try and stop that nervousness. Because then it's extra nervous. <laughs> yeah, the only thing will fix the nervous is to do something different, and as a side effect, the nervousness will slowly come down, okay? This is like, I don't know if you found when we did the, the roots going out, the feet or the breathing, maybe it was a little bit more peaceful for you. You didn't try, you didn't try and make it peaceful, that's impossible. But it's a very good question, thank you, yeah. Absolutely, we do these approaches, we approach our music in a more loving way 
for ourselves, and just accepting that part of us is freaking out and nervous, the best thing we can do is not try and change that. Accept that, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, from there we can build the progress with uh, other approaches. So, to answer your question. So the first thing is when you play, make your sound how you love the sound, not how you think your teacher wants it to be or how, well, within certain parameters, the teacher's trying to show you things that you need to know as a professional. So, of course, but in the end, you have to have your own sound. And so you make that sound um, in a concerto or a sonata or a duo, whatever, just how you love the sound. So that's the first thing that's very, very important, that you focus on playing with the sound that you love. The second thing is listening to the sound coming out of your instrument. Really just listening and how long you hold that note for or how quickly you jump off it completely depends on when you're listening how you feel it should go. If you want to get off that note quicker, <coughs> providing you're not breaking the rules of what the composer wrote too much, or linger on it longer because emotionally the music needs that, you need that. You're, you, you need that emotionally to hold that note or vibrate more or vibrate less or lean on the bow more or much lighter with the bow. All of these things, we're making the immersion of the music how we need it. That's so important, that's, that's really. So that's step number two, listening. And, and then third step is enjoying. Enjoying the sound that we're playing with that we're really listening and enjoying the sound coming out of the instrument. Let yourself enjoy it. And you might be surprised how that may take a little bit of training to you. Oh, I was just trying to get the notes right. Ah, oh, what happened to enjoying it? I forgot. So we have to build these steps. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit, yes, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. It's like a bit of the attitude of a child because they don't judge the, when the, the instruments when they start. Yeah. Yeah, if, if that's helpful, yes, to think of it like that, for sure. Much more. Um, and that's really about not being the criticism in a way which is harmful. Criticism should only be to get a better result. Never cause harm. If it's causing harm, it's not even criticism. It's just mental health then. We have to work out something with ourselves and retrain ourselves and heal that pattern and have more of the coach, not the critic. Yeah. So step four, so we've got playing with the sound that you love, listening and enjoying the sound, feeling how that makes you feel. So, and in your whole body, if you can, move to how your whole body feels when you play. And particularly when you have like we were doing where there were intervals with jumps and stretches or fast passages or just big opening notes like the, with the viola, with viola music earlier, in, you're really there and enjoying that and, and feeling how that makes you feel. The next step is letting your audience in. Letting your audience in, sharing with your audience. So you're playing in your heart. You remember you've actually got an audience there and here we're connecting. And you, you can feel that when somebody's playing and they're just or if they're really letting you in. Because we're human and that's what the arts are all about. That's what music's all about. It's all about the feeling. Without the technique, it can fall over, but without the feeling, maybe not much point. So the feeling is so important. And so us having an attitude of that bank screen coming down always even if we're practicing at home, feel like we're sharing the music and all the sounds coming out of the instrument. And that just becomes with practice more and more and more easy to do. Yeah. And the last step is really what I talked about earlier. Remember that you're the expert. The audience, the audience can't get there without you. They, they can't go where the music's gonna take them. So, you're, you're like the doctor or the nurse. And I often say, you know, we often talk about, in English, we say people in the caring profession, like doctors and nurses, 
and social workers and counsellors. You are just like that. Don't forget that ever because you're on stage because you're like a counsellor for these people. You're like, a, you're like a medicine. You're bringing medicine to people's very difficult lives. And the music is this special magic that we don't get with science, technology, economics and maths and all these other studies. We don't get it because they're going to be your audience. They're going to be the doctors and the scientists and the road workers and everyone who don't maybe play an instrument yet. Not yet. We're working on that. So, okay, any other questions before we finish because we've gone over a bit? Okay, thank you. I hope that's some, some value for you and uh, I can guarantee if you really take that to heart and make that part of your music that you will find things change a lot. So, thank you. Thank you. After listening the the speech about well-being by Rupert, I really thought it was very useful, especially because as a multi-style violinist, sometimes I find it a bit hard to get less nervous on stage, especially if I'm playing songs from other people, for example, written pieces from the classical uh, Western uh, music. And after listening to this, I really thought it's really important to work on myself first as a person so that then I can overcome my stage fright. And also all the techniques that Rupert uh, taught us on the session were very useful to also teach my students and bring, build a better string community. So thank you for this. I really love this class because the things Rupert uh, talked about and, and teach, taught us today uh, were, we all love music, that's a basic thing. But thinking about it and really thinking about how you feel and how you can make other people feel, uh, it's something that doesn't get talked about often enough and I think it's very important because it's what we do. I really would like to thank Hubert for this inspiring uh, demonstration and workshop because I really think that we as musicians we really focus on technical things, interpretation things and so on and we forget the basics and sometimes these basics which he really admirably uh, organized in steps are really useful so that we can get connected to ourselves, our souls and uh, as humans. I think this masterclass was really helpful for me. I didn't want to play because I was really nervous, but I had a chance to work on what I was feeling and trying to connect with the audience. Uh, normally we don't have that opportunity. We just uh, come to the concert or audition and we have to play. And here we could work on how we were feeling. Even I teach for 30 years. It's the first time that I heard somebody a violinist, I mean, not somebody, but a, a violin teacher, um, talking about the wholeness and the consciousness of the, the body and the, the, the inside and the outside and the, the connection and the, the like, like the um, connecting people is like that. It's connecting, it's our, our self with the tool that is the instrument and all the connection with the, the uh, outside, the, the, the public and all the health and the healthy way, the positive way to make the music live. Um, I think this masterclass was really helpful because it's a really good reminder that uh, actually no one is there wanting to that you do bad uh it's a good reminder that we're sometimes too harsh on ourselves and um just so disconnected uh from our feelings and emotions and that is the most important thing about music so yeah i think this was uh like mind opening i guess um and now I just, I, I'm really into practicing this and I'm very curious to see where this goes. I wanted to say really, really lots of 
thanks. It's a very important subject and we really need to have lots of awareness for that. That's why these kind of lectures are absolutely important to have. It was a great experience. <laughs>